Alright guys, how to go back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And no sooner had the World Championship ended than the beef was starting to kick off between the two grand finalists. We are certainly in for a spicy off-season. Draza coming at Simp for a tweet from several months ago. Simp then responding and things get oddly personal between FaZe and Los Angeles Thieves. Very much enjoyed your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. I'm really upset the channel. Thanks very much indeed for doing that. No better time we need to hit the big red button because there is going to be so much to discuss. Us. Not just this drama, which I'm sure is not going to go away even this off season into next season, but roster mania, so many other topics upcoming. Something that's also going to go away is well, a certain tax percentage of the $1.2 million though that Los Angeles Thieves have walked away with still. Incredible result for the entire team and organization. Draza, Kenny, Envoy, and Octane, their first world championship rings. Nature in the picture as well. Just a great storyline on the whole to do it kind of in front of their home crowd as well, I thought was fantastic and sets up next year to be incredible as well. But as Nature said, I thought this is a rather emotional treat, really. I really, like, enjoyed reading this because, as he says right here, it's kind of interesting how much this means to him. I could never get the job done myself, and I'm just unbelievably grateful to be part of an organization that could deliver a world championship, right? So that's the thing, right? Nature now, he could never get his ring as a player. He had that kind of dominant Optic Dynasty team at the early days of the Optic Dynasty. The start of Advanced Warfare, they couldn't deliver in that game. They couldn't deliver that world championship. They came seventh, right, and end up getting the job done after Nature retired, and Karma came into the team later so couldn't get the job done as a player has now got the job done as an owner so I thought just a phenomenal story from Nature really just as you know an OG Call of Duty fan it's just cool to see this happen for Nature on the other side of things though FaZe obviously like difficult season for them definitely a massive blip on the radar of their legacy as a team second on four different occasions this season to four different teams it's not a great look at all like I'm um, yeah never been that close to winning for whatever reason get to the grand finals they just can't get the job done the consistency though is admirable second four times third once like um, that's pretty much unprecedented in a game like Vanguard but they've managed to achieve it but never quite got over the line RCTs and uh, Simp and Abizu will have to wait a little bit longer for their third World Championship ring and Simp's World Championship average placing now drops to a shocking 1.5 only so you know he'll have to work on improving that one next year right even as RC says they're like basically just saying to all, all the, the haters who said that RC should be dropped like you don't even know half the stuff that's gone on behind this year an absolute bloodbath GG's we go next right so confirming that uh, look they're gonna stick together there. There's no real upgrade or even change that FaZe can even consider making, to be honest, to make their team any better. Asti's turned up this tournament as well, as he tends to do when push comes to shove at the end of a tournament. And he's giving credit, of course, to the entire Los Angeles Thieves team. Draza, Octane, Kenny, Envoy, Jacob and Shane. Nothing but respect you guys are animals. So, generally, there was some respect going on between the two organisations. As Octane says, phenomenal games to FaZe. Those guys are the final boss, took everything we had to beat them. Respect, as always, to the other team. Now, it wasn't always so respectful. Now, well, firstly, Abizi wasn't necessarily so respectful to the game itself, and who can blame him? This was no doubt the tweet of the day, maybe even the tweet of the season, there's probably been some good ones. Thank God I'll never have to play this COD ever again, literally the worst game I've ever played, which is quite something for Abizi. Look, we knew from the start of the season these phase guys didn't really like it. The way that they've been able to deliver the results they have, despite obviously hating the game, and as even Abizi makes it very clear right here, is rather impressive. But um, I mean, yeah, Abizi, maybe all his champs winnings are going to go in fine from the CDL as a result of this one. Now, it wasn't so cordial between certain players. Draza, of course, comes out. He's letting everyone know. He had, you know, quite quite the interview, to be honest, after the World Championship concludes. And he was, you know, throwing some daggers at FaZe. I wasn't really sure exactly why he, uh, like, he was, you know, throwing the middle finger up at FaZe or whatever. It seemed like he was getting into the beef and the rivalries with FaZe during the game itself. And I was kind of wondering, okay, where is this whole FaZe versus Draza beef come from? And we'll see what that might be here in a second. But you can see an example right here on the screen of when Draza's uh, kind of letting them know. Now, first of all, with this old Draza, Draza discussion rights. People are free to either like or dislike Draza. It doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, I don't really understand. Like, sometimes the fans will say, oh yeah, we want personalities, we want straw lines, we want the drama, the rivalries, and also we want the viewership, right? We want the viewership to be there and, yeah, people to watch more Call of Duty. But then when someone comes out, does talk trash, backs it up, and wins the World Championship, and then the other guys are coming back and responding to them, all of a sudden people are like, wow, this Draza guy, wow, I really hate this guy. He should really shut his mouth or whatever. It's like, I don't really get the whole duality there sometimes. And even people like roasting thieves for like smart 
smiling during series and stuff. Don't really get the whole thing. Look, you can either like Charles or you don't like him, but having personalities that are willing to talk trash and back it up is just great for the scene because it creates great storylines going into next year. A phase wanted to get revenge. Charles wanted to keep backing up the trash talk. I'd much prefer the players to actually do something than just be, you know, absolute robots, to be honest. So Dwarza isn't afraid of doing exactly that, right? He's been this way for years, and that's the good thing about a player that's willing to talk trash actually being good and delivering results because people actually care about them now. So I'm not saying you should like Dwarza or dislike Dwarza. You can make your own mind up, of course, but um, I just think it's good for Call of Duty in general. This is what Call of Duty is all about, to be honest. So anyway, Dwarza is not afraid to throw the dagger in. It was just a matter of time, he says. And then going on to say this tweet. Now, well, firstly, RST says this. Come on, Zach is the goat. He can do whatever he wants. So part of FaZe was like, okay, Dwarza, he, whatever. He beat us in the grand finals for his first ring. He can talk his trash. I don't mind. We were the team to beat. We were last year's world champions. He takes us down. Now, this was the tweet that kicked the whole thing off. Thanks for the ring, says Draza. So he brings up this tweet from January. Draza Odyssey is the king of bringing up kind of like old tweets. Now, we looked at this back in January, right? Because I think it was, it was a kickoff classic. Draza clutched this one versus two. He chucks the smoke down and Sim says, well deserved loss for doing this in a match. And then he comes back and says the following pretty weird how snaking got patched and still destroyed you and Draza and everyone else in the league last year, right? So he was coming back at Kenny and Draza for calling out Selium effectively on the phase team for snaking. And then he was like, well, look, snaking got patched last year. We weren't even doing it anymore. Still smoked the whole team. So Draza's coming back and saying, well, actually, look, you might have done well last year, but this year it's a different story. Thanks for the ring. You talked trash on me. You disrespected me back in January. And now at the end of the season, who's laughing now? That's what Draza's done. Thought there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. Now, there's also nothing wrong with Simp coming back and giving a bit of a response, right? He says, act like you've been here before, you clown. So saying, like, you know, what is this, Draza? Your first world championship? I've got two. I've been in, what, four world championship grand finals. You've only been in one. Like, okay, I'll see you next year, mate. I'll see you for the rematch of the grand finals because I'm certainly going to be there. It's kind of what Sims getting at here. So I just thought this is pretty funny between the two of them. It did remind me of this actually from back in the well, Modern Warfare days when Exceed versus Draza and in fairness Exceed also the world championship this year from the challenger side. But you know, this was happening back at this is effectively the Draza kind of not necessarily the villain origin story, but um, maybe you will become a villain over time to be honest, depending on how things go with Los Angeles thieves. But uh, this is the trash talk origin story really for Draza a few years ago. Now, well, this does honestly continue because Shane then, the coach for Los Angeles thieves, comes back and says, you know, okay, relax, kid. Actually, here's the tweet right here. Relax, lad, he says. He can't respond, Prasini goes. And then, um, and I don't know, Shane says something else. And then Prasini comes back and says, so he just got to sit there and be a good boy for you. And Draza got it. My bad, boss, right? So this is kind of getting a little bit next level here. And I'm um, even as, uh, you know, Simpsons in reply, guy brought up a tweet from January. I'm well within my right to respond to it. And even this then from Simps to kind of, you know, come back even further. Congrats, brothers. Well deserved. At Kenny Octane and Envoy, right? Not even adding Draza in this, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. So this has taken on a new level and this drama I'm sure is not going to go away at all, especially into next season if these two teams, they are going to stay together. Like Draza versus Simp, Draza versus FaZe is going to be a great one. And look, it might come back to bite Draza at some point or another, but that's the great thing about these storylines coming out. Now this is where things I think took a bit of a turn for the worse. Like there's nothing at all wrong with Draza coming out and Simp coming out and having a bit of a back and forth, right? Like, okay, maybe it overshadowed the World Championship win to some degree. I'm sure Thieves would probably prefer it to be great for everyone to be sitting here today talking about how good they are as a team, but instead we're talking about all the beef and drama that's come out as a result, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's kind of overshadowed the victory to a certain extent, especially with how personal all this type of stuff got right. So anyway, Jetski tweets out, Draza tweeting like he ain't going home with Keeks. So Keeks is his girlfriend, right? And I don't know anything about the character of his girlfriend. I know that plenty of tweets and kind of exposés and digging up old tweets have come out over the last day or so. Normally want to get into this whole like e-girl drama, but a BZ does kind of weigh in here, so it's definitely worthy of mention. He drops the LMAO, kind of saying, yeah, that's his girlfriend, that's pretty unfortunate, mate, or whatever. So, um, I mean, yeah, I just thought, like, maybe a little bit strange, to be honest. Though, in fairness, she was going pretty rogue, right? She was in the front row, she makes a lot of noise, that's just how it is. And, um, honestly, it seemed to be just straight up calling out when the phase guys were trying to defuse the bomb to get Draza to clutch the rounds. Like, uh, this was going on. This isn't acceptable, not something we want to be seeing at all. And, um, I mean, yeah, she was doing this on the regular. Now, this is actually being talked about here because, I mean, firstly, Draza says, both y'all some weirdos, right? Which I think is kind of fair enough in a way when things get personal like this, not defending Keeks at all, but I don't know, I don't think it necessarily should have gone to this level. But um, yeah, Draza, again, is saying now Abizi's the weirdo. So not only is uh, Simp calling him a clown, but now Draza saying Abizi's a weirdo. Like, um, it, it's all kicking off, to be honest. Now, this was actually mentioned as well here because Keeks actually comes out and says, you know, he worked really hard for this year to watch him accomplish his goals. People were certainly in the replies and people were also talking, okay, wow, she shouldn't have been calling out the defuse. And Ali Cat was trying to say maybe they wouldn't have been out of here or maybe Draza would have checked it anyway. He does say he would have checked the bomb anyway in that situation. 
but actually Astis comes out and says, respectfully, we heard it from the other side of the stage, saying that, uh, you know, she was so loud, calling out the defuse, that actually they heard it, right, on stage there from, I guess she was in the front row or whatever, like, um, you know, he said, damn before he died, right, so that's obviously not a good look. And then things, of course, went to another level, because this tweet, which has since been deleted, or the account's been deleted, like, it's quote says, you know, wake up, wake up, wake up, because this was the, the kind of tweet here, which I'm not going to dive into all this kind of, like, e-girl drama, effectively, and, um, you know, between, I think, like, one player's girlfriend, the other player's girlfriend, the history of the girlfriends with other pro players and amateur players, and all this type of stuff. There's been so much talk about this, but it's probably not really relevant to the topic at hand. Like, I'm more interested in what the pros have to say to the other pros and all the behind-the-scenes stuff, but it must just be at least mentioned because it's relevant to the discussion of Draza calling Abizi a weirdo based on this whole situation that kicked off as a result. So I don't really know why this whole thing kicked off to the level that it did. I don't know if people were just trying to get at Draza or just trying to get at his girlfriend or whatever after the trash talk that Draza was doing. There is a, an extent to which, like, look, if you're an envoy or something, if you're stoic like envoy, then um, this type of stuff isn't really going to happen to envoy, right? Because he's coming out here, he's not saying any of this type of stuff, he's not riling up people, and therefore people aren't going to start coming at him and then digging up old tweets of his girlfriend, right, and doing all this type of stuff as well. So Draza has, in a sense, invited it to a certain degree by saying what he said. People wouldn't have been doing this if he was more respectful to FaZe, but, like, at the same time, I think things went a little bit far last night, all things considered. So anyway, look, the beef does kind of eventually come to a close, but um, only, this is only for now, right? There's no doubt there's still some resentment built up between these two guys. As the flanks say, hi, Simba Draza, let's get on the flank. And as Draza says, there's no beef, just had to match the energy, right? Saying that, look, back in January, Sim was talking all this trash. I'm just going to come back in and say what I have to say after beating him 5-2 for the World Championship ring. And Sim eventually says, okay, look, maybe we'll just leave it there. I got no beef. He can enjoy the ring this year. GG's. It's saying, well, this year very specifically, right? Because next year, he obviously wants to come back and do the same thing all over again. So yeah, definitely intrigued to your thoughts on this. It's like hour one, effectively, of the off season, And this type of stuff is happening immediately. I'm personally a big fan of the trash talk and the personalities coming out on display. I do think things went a little bit far as well. And now, you know, Draza's coming out and saying Abizi's a weirdo. So, like, I'm sure this type of stuff is not going to go away anytime soon. On the more positive note, though, I thought this was really cool to see. 275,000 peak viewers for the COD League playoffs. This is the thing, right? Honestly, if we had it on Twitch, maybe it gets more viewers than this. But at the end of the day, for this league to be sustainable, like, the league needs to get a deal somewhere. Because TV rights deals are a massive revenue generator. So, they've got to go where the money is. Not sure what's going to happen next season. But, yeah, honestly, the viewership for this tourney was pretty great, all things considered, given it was Vanguard's. If next year's COD is better, hopefully we can do better than this yet again. And uh, the storylines are going to be fantastic, right? Because FaZe and Thieves right now, who knows how good these teams are going to be next season. But if they're both great teams, then, um, you know, this rivalry is not going to go away anytime soon. But very much intrigued to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. Tell us to YouTube gods. That's a good video. I'd also like you to see it as well. And I'd grow the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you as always. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you next time. I just want to hear Josh's interview, I'm not going to lie. Yes, I want to hear Draza. Draza, come on down. Let me talk to you because I know you feel good. <laughs> Coming out with your first ring. Tell me, what does this mean for you? It's, it's unbelievable. I don't even know what to say, but I'm back to back. Come on. The best in the world. Yo. <laughs> exactly what I wanted to say.